It's March 2024. Let's take a look at the garden. The last time I did a video tour of the garden was November of last year. It's now March 2024 and you can tell it's spring because the garden is once again overgrown with oxalis nasturtiums and the aeoniums are completely open and everything looks kind of a little overgrown in a way I, I like it I like that I like it um, and one of the nice things about making these videos is you can see how the garden has changed so much over the years it's really filled in a lot of these places were completely bare they'd be like single stem aeoniums in a bunch of soil and it's kind of nice to see the progression of the garden through the seasons and through the years so I'm going to take you through a lot of the major changes that have happened in the garden not much change here it's just the regular seasonal change looks really pretty um, here's this is the very front and that's the other thing with this garden is almost everything in this garden I've either gotten for free or for really cheap. Um, this blue flame agave found on the side of the road. These really nice aloes. Those were from my mother's garden. Same with the aeoniums here. The euphorbia sticks on fire. These Senecio blue chalk sticks. This is a little agave I got on clearance from Home Depot and it continues to pop out a lot. Um, these little sedums were left out by a neighbor on the side of the road. This aloe as well. This little aloe blue elf. There's two of them. They were given to me by a neighbor. So that's one of the nice things about this garden. It just shows with a little bit of patience. You can actually fill an entire garden for not a ton of money, just time. And um, so I'm also going to show you this side. This is a little parkway where for a couple of years I threw down some wildflower seeds. I didn't throw any seeds down this year. These flax have just reseeded themselves along with the California poppies that are starting to bloom. They're closed because it's morning. Once the sun comes out, they'll um, open up. Um, this is a volunteer, African daisy. You can see if you turn around, there's actually tons of those. And when we first moved in, there was only one plant and it just keeps sending seeds out and it's really beautiful so we don't mind that so the parkway's looking nice and green there's a lot of weeds in here i'm trying to do what i can um, and the same with this side lots of flax but also lots of weeds i just kind of let this go a little crazy in the spring it's all these nasturtiums and oxalis so this just gets a little bit overgrown in the spring and you can see our neighbors you can see the property line our neighbors have a gardener who weed wax, so it's effective. Um, and eventually it dies out and I pull it out and then it comes back year on year. But I think it's a little bit pretty and it fills it in and it's nice and shady. And you know, it keeps the ground moist and those agaves don't seem to mind. And here's an agave that death bloomed out and I think it's almost time to finally take that out of there. Anyone who has followed some of my videos will notice that once again this is going on three years I still haven't put in my dry riverbed that I've promised what can I say I just haven't done it my poor little aloes here a lot of them got affected by um, aloe aphids that just really did a number to them they're recovering I had to do a neem oil treatment um, and they're not dead but they're not looking too pretty that happened to a lot of my aloes I'll show you over these ones survived. These ones didn't get so affected. But over here on this side of the driveway, you can see how these ones were also affected. New growth there in the center, but these outer leaves were really affected. And all it takes is a little bit of a spray of either neem oil or isopropyl alcohol, and it gets rid of those. Um, I just wasn't on top of it. That's what happens. Um, also in the front here, last year we had a wildflower meadow and they have gone and reseeded themselves. I didn't throw any seeds out here. Uh, the only problem has been the weeds. You can see there's a lot of bachelor's buttons and poppies and calendulas. Unfortunately, I found out later, most of them were not native plants. The flax are native to California and we have 
California poppies. Um, but everything else isn't. So after this season is done, I might make more of an effort and try to just make it native California plants because that's better for the environment. Um, and up here, we, um, I finally weed whacked. This was kind of crazy overgrown um, parkway. And this is a, a little bit more of what it was like. So here's a bunch of the miner's lettuce that's gone to flower, but up here was less miner's lettuce and more grass. So the grass is um, invasive grass. It looks really nice and green and lush. So, you know, it's not too bad, but it's not the best for environmental garden reasons. So yeah, and then up here, yeah, you can see a little bit more sunlight and that is because we did a huge cull of a lot of our trees which I, I probably mentioned in other videos so going back to the front of the garden and i'm trying to be i know i always get comments that i move the camera too much so i'm trying to be really cautious about that we're going to move up here again everything is pretty overgrown and lush and in January, February, we do tend to get a lot more rain in the last couple of years and the plants do really love it. They are drought tolerant plants, but you know, this is what they do. They soak up that rain when it does rain and they hold it in their leaves and they hold on to it for the whole rest of the year. So they are really big and lush right now. And yeah, it's just lots of different succulents. We have aeonyms, we have rock purslane, senecio, aloe, euphorbia, sticks on fire, some big agave americanas. Everything's a little bit overgrown by the nasturtiums at the moment. Some more agave and these African daisies. And my little sad looking path, which I do have an update with that. So this little patch is looking sort of barren, not totally barren. I did have a volunteer Pride of Madeira that was in here and had gotten so big and I finally took it out and um, a lot of the aeoniums broke so I replanted them. They've kind of come back completely. Um, I planted a little punchia cactus and some new agaves and as happens every year at this time of year the nasturtiums like really get overgrown. They tend to block out a lot of the sun. So I have a lot of aeoniums planted under, under there. So we just need to be really careful when we do remove the nasturtiums because they'll start to dry out. And what happens is the succulents underneath aren't used to the sunshine and they get sunburned. So we just have to be a little bit careful with that. And then as usual this time of year, the little Victorian boxwood tree is covered in blooms. It smells amazing, but it does drop a lot of blooms which can be a little bit annoying and my little cactus over here I have my little cactus corner some agaves aloes a punchia cactus torch cactus everything seems to be relatively happy with a little torch plant that never really took but all of these agaves and aloes are all pretty happy back here. The um, Kalanchoe Mother of Thousands, these are monocarpic, so these are all death blooms, which is why they look pretty terrible, but they drop so many other plants underneath, so they're a little bit invasive in that sense. Moving on, this is another euphorbia. This is so big right now. This started from one little stick that I found broken at Home Depot, just stuck in a little pot of soil and didn't do that well until I planted it into the ground. It didn't like being in the pot, it liked being in the ground, and it's huge now, and I think it's really cool. So what I might do is take some of those sticks, repropagate them, and then put them there, because I feel like that would be a nice continuation of this real bushy euphorbia. And uh, as you can see, there's a, like a lovely dirt path here, and this is one of my projects that I am finally working on. I knew we had, as mentioned, we had a lot of rain. So we did want I did want to finally make this path more permanent. We have a lot of gravel and um, leftover from another project. So I finally started digging down 
last weekend and created more of a path and then I'm going to create uh, put the gravel down and then put some DG to make it a true path. Here's some little Crassula Gollum. Started as little sticks. They have really taken over. They like being in the soil. And what does happen is everything gets so big and some of the succulents get a little bit overgrown. And then obviously with all the nasturtiums and the oxalis or the wood sorrel, uh, this is just like a little lush weed garden. You just gotta leave that be. Eventually I might put some paths in here. Um, and I have other aloes and agaves that I have planted and they're obviously just getting no sun right now. And then back here, which is almost impossible to reach, that's where I do have a little bit of a dead garden. I've thrown a lot of broken succulents back there just to see what happens. So we shall see. Um, some weeding. <laughs> These are just a lot of the weeds that pulled out of this path. Um, and more weeds that need to just get pulled out. Pulling out the weeds is just an ongoing process. So, you know, I do like the lush green look of this. This side of the garden gets less sun. This side of the garden gets more sun. What I do like about this garden is, and sort of, it wasn't intentional, but now it's intentional, is um, I kind of created lots of different um, heights and levels. It's already, it was already a graded, like a little bit of a hill, but um, just by accident, we moved a lot of soil to this side and it became a little bit more of a hill. And, and now that's such a nice way to get the plants to display rather than just one flat garden. Um, so moving back here along our path, which is in process, Ooh, the sun is coming out. So I'm looking so pretty. No big major news here with these. Again, almost everything in this yard has been free or clearance. Thai crown of thorns, this is another euphorbia. That was on clearance. These are some little agave pups I got for free, um, just found um, broken on the side of the road. This rock purslane came from another one that was already planted in my yard. And you just stick it in the soil and it comes back to life. We have these grap this is another little succulent garden it obviously is getting covered in blooms and a little bit hidden but um, I do have a video where I put this together this little um, succulent tapestry that needs to be tidied up we've got lots of little pretty succulents um, in there and I had a little fountain um, but it just never really worked so that's the thing with these gardens. They're a living, breathing, moving thing. Um, I planted a bunch of aeoniums back here. Some are getting huge and too tall and need to be cut back. And then some are like hidden under all of these nasturtiums. And then this is my pile of rock hiding under this tarp. These were succulents I found from somewhere else. I planted them up. They were just looking gangly and not too good. I'll, I'll put them elsewhere or give them away. But yeah, now we're kind of back down the back of the garden and I'll give you a little, there's me. Here's my path that we're working on. So maybe that's this weekend's project is to move this pile of gravel into the path. And then back here, the succulent tapestry here, we've got some Aeonium Kiwis that are looking super lush. They love this time of year. And this little succulent tapestry that's always an ongoing project um, planted into this log. And there it is. So, and this is some ice plant that had been left out from a neighbor's yard. More aeoniums, Senecio blue chalk sticks. And here's our little cute fairy garden that we add constantly to. And neighbors even add some fun stuff. Um, trying to get some sedum to take to make some greenery here, but um, doesn't get a ton of sunshine, a little bit, but it's just a little bit of fun. This side of the garden, this is like the fence to part of our house. Um, this is getting really overgrown. 
you don't notice it until you see other videos of like when I first put it in. But all of these agave attenuatas were tiny when I put them in and now they're huge. So I think we need to pull them out, replace them. The euphorbias definitely need to be cut back, especially when you get up here. It just looks bad and overgrown to me. And then a huge major difference in the yard is, of course, this side where we had taken down a ton of trees and I've started finally planting it up. I threw down some native wildflower seeds and have put in some native plants. I'll show you more detail of that, but first I'm gonna show you, this is our little, a little succulent corner. This is one of the first parts of the yard that I did up and it's looking a little sad, but I do like my little pots. This is an organ pipe cactus featured in a previous video. I repotted it because it was not growing very well in the ground. And then these are my Aeonium Sunburst. I featured them in my video that I made just last week about Aeoniums. And in that video, I talk about death blooms of Aeoniums. And unfortunately, it does look like this one is about to death bloom. And you can tell because the petals are really compact. They're starting to move out compared to this one where you see the petals are more inverted. They're not as packed as this one. So that's just what happens with these plants. Um, unlike these ones, you can see their bloom comes out from the side. These ones bloom from the center and it doesn't look like it's going to give me any pups, but you know, we'll see what happens. So <clears throat> I've put more aeoniums along the side here and yeah, here's where We've got some wildflowers and a bunch of native plants have gone in there. They haven't taken yet. I only put them in last week. Um, it's been a pretty busy time. And our avocado tree that is very sad and depressed before now, um, well, finally it's getting the sunshine it needs and I fertilized it and it has a ton of new growth and even new branches coming just straight out the side and at the very top I did notice it has some little blooms so this is kind of exciting to have an old tree get some new growth so yes this hillside is very steep so it's pretty hard to manage um, these sunflowers actually we had sunflowers in our front yard a year ago and a squirrel kept stealing the heads off of them and I believe that's exactly what that is from the squirrel taking a head of a sunflower and hopping up a tree and nibbling away and dropping some seeds so it's kind of cute here's a lot of California poppies that are going to eventually bloom out here and we also have um, a lupin this is a Dudleya I got at my local, I did purchase that. Dudleya are one plant that are not to be poached. Um, it's a native California succulent. I bought that at our botanic garden. They did a sale recently. That was one of the plants. And what's cool about it is apparently they like to be grown on a hillside. They don't like to be planted flat. So that's what I did. But weeds have been the biggest thorn in my side this year. I'm just trying to keep on top of them. Because back here, so part of this, you can see this is a little bit of a dumping ground. We're trying to clean this up. Eventually every project will come to some kind of a conclusion. And I won't spend too much time back here, really. We'll wrap this up pretty quickly. These are pea bushes. They just get so huge. They were tiny when we first moved in. This is my raised bed with some volunteer tomatoes, some potatoes, and then inside here, these are, I don't know if you can see that, like skeletal pumpkin. So these were all little pumpkin plants that, you know, when we had a Halloween pumpkin, I, I threw some into a raised bed and they started to grow. So that's kind of cool. 
I'll show the hill a little bit more. I've been putting some Senecio in some cuttings that I had. We'll see if they take. Up there is another native California plant. I have a bunch of things popped in here. And I'm planning on doing a whole video on that. So I won't go into too much detail as usual. Always lots of projects. Here's my other sunburst aeonium and I just realized. So the other one I notice is death blooming. This is not, but the plus side on this one, if you can see, this one is creating pups. There's a lot of new little baby plants in there. So that is very exciting. So I'm not gonna worry too much about the one that we will lose to the death bloom because this one looks great. That's waffles. And we'll just briefly come to the side of the yard here where spring has sprung on my hillside garden. I've planted some new native California plants. That's a uh, salvia dara's choice. We have some California poppies that have volunteered themselves in there. This is um, Mediterranean native. This is a rock rose or orchid rose. It's gotten out of control, but it's so pretty and it has so many blooms on the way. And this is what I really want to show you. This is Ceanothus. It's Ceanothus season. This is a really beautiful native California plant with these just stunning blue flowers. Um, and it makes such a great ground cover. This one is a Ceanothus Yankee Point. And then up there, is another tall one. I don't know how well you can see it. Different variety, also covered in blue blooms. They get all kinds of blue blooms, purple blooms. There's lots of different varieties. And um, yeah, they just go crazy this time of year. And this is another rock rose. We have some manzanitas growing in there. And this is a salvia microphylla like a kind of salvia. I thought it was a native Californian. It is not, but that's okay. And then we have some rose geraniums that again, they were also taken as these tiny cuttings and they've turned into huge bushes. So pretty cool. And then just back here, here is my succulent wall. I redid that recently and I started making a video about it and um, I haven't finished because it hasn't really filled in. So I wanted to wait till it filled in before I made the video. Here's some of my little propagations that I've got going on. Always lots of projects. Drives my spouse a little bit insane with all the projects. I know you don't mind. And then these little ice plants are about to go crazy with the blooms. They're not great plants, and I'm mostly anti-ice plant, but I do love the blooms on those. So, so there is my beautiful hillside garden. When, when I first moved into this house, it was just terrible weeds, so it looks so much better. And then we've got some food, some of a food garden here. We've got a little tangerine tree, our lemon tree, which I hadn't known, it's looking wild now. Rosemary. We have a mission fig. And these, if you're ever curious what happens when you take a green onion or a spring onion from the grocery store and uh, plant it, this is what happens. You get so many. These have all just sprouted up from there. So we will never be without spring onions. But look at this. This is a Meyer lemon, very sweet. It's a hybrid between an orange and lemon. So they're very sweet lemons and it is just covered in bloom. So that's exciting. A little banana up there. So, oh, and then these are little volunteer lettuce. Again, this is what happens when you put lettuce in your yard and you let it bolt. It creates new lettuce. Pretty cool. And then some volunteer tomatoes that are coming in. So as for the rest of the yard, nothing wild to report. I have an Aeonium that had a mealy bug problem. It looks like it's finally bouncing back. We have our nice little fire pit area, which I created a video of creating this. I just need to edit it.
This is uh, the garden in March. Thanks so much for joining me in my walk around the garden in March 2024. It's been really fun making these videos to see how the garden changes over the years, how it fills in and progresses and went from a pretty dry, weedy, blank space. It is now filled in with a ton of succulents and food plants and native plants and flowers and all kinds of things. It just goes to show you don't need a ton of money to grow a garden. I just need a little bit of patience and just be a little bit clever about how and where you get your plants. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments below. I love replying to you. I try to reply to almost every comment that I get. And of course, you can also find me on TikTok and Instagram. And don't forget to subscribe.